What's good team? Welcome to another small James coding tutorial where today we're going to be talking about async await and promises in JavaScript. And so to look at the functionality and behavior, I have a JavaScript script here and inside we have one main function that gets called at the bottom and we have a sleep function, which is going to be used to represent any asynchronous behavior. Now asynchronous behavior comes in a lot of forms and it's most commonly used in data fetching. So if you send a fetch request to retrieve some data, or maybe you're communicating front end to back and you're sending a network request, you're getting a response. Anything like that is asynchronous behavior and it works using promises. And so we can see that this works because if I come into my main here and I say const promise is equal to sleep. Now remember, think of sleep as the function that requests data. So when I write is equal to sleep, it's sending out for that particular piece of information or it's making, it's initializing this asynchronous request. And now if I console.log promise to see what we have here, we can see that when I execute this file, we get this promise that just says pending. And so a promise represents the promise of information. So when we have these asynchronous calls, let's say you send out to, you know, con communicate with your backend system or you fetch data from an API, you create a promise. So essentially, if we really dive into this line of code here, calling sleep sends a communication or a request out to that particular function or that API requesting that information. And until we have received what we're expecting to get back, so in the case of a data API, we're expecting to get data back until we have received that data. What we do is we assign a promise of information to this variable. So this promise is Mesa is essentially just a promise of information. So that makes it more clear. Now the issue in this particular instance is that because I'm not handling the asynchronous behavior, my code just continues to execute. And so it just assigns this promise of information and then moves on to the next thing. And it's essentially neglecting whenever that information comes back in, we don't know because we've already moved on. So it's irrelevant. Now, traditionally what you could do is you could use a dot then statement. So we could just say element retrieve that. And we could say console.log retrieved information, excuse my spelling. And so now when I execute the same script, we can see that we console.log the promise first. And when we get that information back, we use the dot then, and it's saying, okay, put a pin in this. We're going to save it as the promise of information for the minute. And so you can see that we have indeed console.log that promised for information just here. Uh, so, you know, this can be made more clear if I go promise of information, excuse the spelling once again, and run that file. We can see that we have the promise of information. And then when finally that information does come back, the sleep function in this particular case finishes, we execute the then statement. Now, if I change this to enter a 10,000 millisecond amount, that's going to become more clear and run that script. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10 code executes. just like that. And now that then statement gets executed and that's kind of handling the asynchronous behavior. Now dot then is sufficient, but it is by no means the best or greatest practice. And so what we want to do instead is if we use the async await, so the async goes in front of the function call, and now we can tell our code to await this particular thing and forget about the dot then. And so this syntax, this asynchronous syntax, as soon as we say to this function, okay, async keyword as a prefix to the function declaration, it's saying that any code inside of this code block that has an await step in front of it, pause, pause and halt until that promise is fulfilled. So instead of just assigning it as a promise and you know, whenever it comes in, it comes in, we're physically going to wait for this promise to resolve or be fulfilled and then move on to the next step. So before we could see that we would console.log the promise because the console would actually come first and then the dot then statement would get executed. But in this particular case, we would expect the code block, specifically this code block to halt on this await statement until the await statement is completely fulfilled, that promise is fulfilled, 
And then what we'll do is we'll just, instead of assigning a promise of information to this particular variable, we will instead assign whatever data we get back in that fulfilled promise to that particular variable. And so now when I rerun this function, we get nothing back. It sits on this line, it waits for this data fetch or whatever your asynchronous call might be to come back. In this particular case, we're sleeping for 10 seconds. And then we finally get the promise of information and it's undefined because we're not returning anything from this particular statement. But the point is, is that this console.log waited, it awaited the resolution of this asynchronous call. And so now instead of chaining the dot then statements together and, and having a really confusing network of dot thens and dot catch and dot finally, now what we can do is make ensure that this code block executes sequentially. And so if we had multiple await steps, you know, like a common use case is let's say you're doing a get request. So we can say const response is equal to await fetch a particular URL just in here like this. And then what we could do is in the step, in the second step, we could say const data is equal to await res.json. Now, traditionally, both of these would be dot then dot then. Otherwise, they would just resolve a promise and you wouldn't get any information back. But now we can just write our code out sequentially as we traditionally would using these await keywords that just tells this function, this code block to pause, wait for the promise of information to resolve and be fulfilled. In this particular case, it's this fetch of this URL. So that's a get request to get that data. We await for that promise to resolve. Then we assign it to this res variable and then we can move on and do the next step, so on and so forth. And so suddenly your code is much cleaner, much more readable, and that sequential order is just very common sense for JavaScript in terms of the execution of the code. Now you can define as many async function calls as you possibly like, but the, but the most important thing is that if you're going to use this await syntax, you have to make sure that the higher level function or the containing function has that async there to allow that to happen. If I just come into a function down here, not async, and try to call sleep and await that, this code block will not execute because we do not have that async function there. But yeah, I hope that helps. If you enjoyed the video, please like and sub, super appreciate it. Comment down below if there's anything you'd like me to explain next. And I hope that gives you a better understanding of the async await syntax. It's excellent once you get the hang of it and it's worth the effort. Catch you guys later. Peace.